Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, for the last couple of weeks, I've been lucky enough to be riding this bad boy, the 2019 KTM 790 Adventure R. Uh, in this video, I'm going to tell you all the things I've found out about the bike, so if you're interested in this machine, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, the KTM 790 Adventure R then, a new bike for the 2019 model. You know, I've been lucky enough to borrow this bike from those nice people at KTM UK for the last couple of weeks or so to really try and get to understand what the bike is about. So what I've tried to do is learn the lessons about the bike, the sorts of things that you wouldn't necessarily pick up if you just had the bike on, say, a one-hour test ride. So I've ridden it in all sorts of scenarios, night and day, wet and dry, fast roads, slow roads, you name it. Uh, and I've got to uh, understand what the bike's about in those situations. Plus, I've uh, looked into the cost of ownership of the bike as well, and I'll be bringing you those figures through the review. So, if you want to understand what the bike's like to live with, then uh, this video's for you. So, what's the adventure R like in town then? Well, here I am in, uh, where am I? Toaster, this is actually. Lovely little uh, market town in uh, Northamptonshire. Always busy here though, as you can see. And uh, so quite a good little test to see which is like in traffic. Slow speed handling, absolutely beautiful. No problem with the fueling on this bike. The issue with it is, is look where my feet are. I'm right on my tippy toes here on both sides. It is a tall old bike. So uh, if you're shorty like me, I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. Then it is a fair old stretch to the ground with the uh, Adventure R seat on, which puts the seat at something like 880 millimeters. But the upside of it being a tall bike is it does mean you've got a great situational awareness. You can see over traffic, you can see what's coming, and hopefully people can see you coming as well. There's good road presence with the bike. Because that low centre of gravity, nice and easy to manoeuvre, you could filter with it. Although again, because I'm a bit of a shorty, I don't feel that confident to filter with it, to be honest. So I think uh, my sort of summary for riding through town with it is uh, great to be seen on, and great to see through traffic but uh, not the best commuter ever because in my case I'm a bit short for it and I don't feel that confident filtering on it but if you're taller that wouldn't be an issue slow speed handling though beautiful balance the bike fantastic so the 790 adventure in the wet then what's she like well it's never pleasant riding in the wet is it it's a bit like riding in the dark, I think it's best avoided if you can, but sometimes you can't help it and uh, you have to ride in these conditions. It's a pretty horrible day today as you can see. It's been raining for about the last hour, roads are very slippery. It hadn't rained for about a week before this, so it's particularly slippery. And how does this bike fare? Well, first off, I've got it in rain mode, so uh, throttles off the, uh, sorry, softens off the throttle a little bit and up to the ABS and traction control. So you've got technology on your side, which is a good thing. Of course, as I often say, you can't rely on technology in these situations. Because if you go mad, of course, uh, physics will take over and you'll slide off the bike. But all the currently available technology is there on the 790 Adventure to help you out for riding these sort of inclement conditions. And I suppose the other thing is what about uh, protection from the weather? Well, with this little screen that uh, I'm really not a fan of, <laughs> there's basically no protection on your upper part of your body at all. Fair amount of protection down the bottom end, it's quite a bulbous bike at the uh, at the front end, so you're quite protected there. But of course, you are going to get wet when riding in the rain, it's a motorcycle after all. I suppose the other thing to consider when thinking about riding in the rain are the tyres, and these uh, bikes come as standard, or at least this, the R, comes with the Metz, the Carew tyres, which are quite knobbly as I said. So again, Although I've not felt any slippage or anything like that while I've been riding in the rain, it's felt completely planted. I wouldn't want to be absolutely tossing it around the corners because those knobblies ain't going to be that grippy on slippy surfaces like this. So all in all then, in terms of uh, riding in the wet, I think I'd give the bike 7 out of 10. Uh, I think it gets marks because it's got all the technology there to help you in terms of traction control and ABS, lean angle sensitive at that. But it's a bit rubbish when it comes to uh, protection from the screen and the tyres aren't, uh, don't fill me full of uh, confidence in the wet, although that's more psychological than actual. So what's the KTM Adventure R like on faster roads then? Well, I'm here on the dual carriageway, this is the uh, A5 just outside Milton Keynes and I'm doing 
you know, typical sort of motorway speed, 71, 72 miles an hour. A couple of things strike me. Number one, there's plenty of go in this bike. You could go a lot faster if you wanted to. Overtaking and so on is not an issue at all. And the comfort on the bike is really nice. The riding position is lovely. What's not so good is a complete lack of protection from that ridiculous little screen. Because at these sorts of speeds, for me, at my height and wearing my crash helmet, I'm wearing an RA Tour X4, which is a sort of an adventure style helmet with a peak. I've got absolutely loads of vibration coming off of this screen. It's pretty horrible. In fact, as I overtake this and I increase the speed slightly, okay, look, at 77, the level of vibration in my helmet is pretty unbearable, actually, to the point that I almost can't see. That is, I think, the worst bike I've ridden on a motorway on in terms of protection off the windscreen. Luckily, there is an easy fix for it. I'm going to slow down a bit just to get out of that horrible vibration. There is an easy fix on this bike because all the parts on the normal adventure, the non-R, are interchangeable. So you could get the uh, non-R screen as an option. When you buy the bike, you could have the non-R screen if you want. I would definitely go for that. It's not even like you can, uh, you know, adjust this on the fly. It is adjustable, but I'm told that you have to do it via screwdrivers and things. So, uh, yeah, not good in that respect. Other than that, the rest of the wind protection on the bike is quite good. It's got quite a big frontal area and of course where the big fuel tank is protects you. So lower half the body quite protected, top half not protected, but that's as you'd expect with that little screen, but that really is quite awful. Unless you desperately want that little screen and you're gonna be riding off road and pretty much never on, on a fast road, I would highly recommend you don't stick with that screen. So there we are, that's what she's like on faster roads. Not ideal I'd say. Okay, so having moaned so much about the uh, buffeting that I was feeling on my adventure style helmet, my peaked array Tour X4, I've decided to come out again just to be fair to the bike. Get up to a little bit of dual carriage road just up here, wind the bike up to uh, 70 miles an hour or so, hello sir, and just see if I have the same vibration issues, the same blurred vision, etc., with this helmet. This is my HJC Raffer 11, a standard sort of sports bike type helmet if you like, but uh, significantly no peak. So I want to see if uh, high speeds on the 790 Adventure with this small screen, but with a non-peaked helmet, whether the uh, buffet on the head's okay. So just come up to the dual carriageway now and we'll wind her up. Okay, so 60 miles now at the moment, all is well. I'm in the wind blast, but no terrible buffet at 60. Okay, winding her up then. Okay, so I'm just overtaking this bus and indicated 82 miles an hour. And I'm sad to report, I do still have that buffet in my helmet. Yeah, it's not down to the peaked helmet. If anything, it's maybe not quite as bad with the non-peaked helmet, but it's still there. At five foot eight, I'm just a shorty on this bike. At Admittedly fast speeds, there is a terrible buffet right on the top of the head. Definitely you need the bigger screen on here if you're going to be doing motorways. So what's the bike like at night then? How do the lights fare? Well, let me just come down this road and uh, park up in a little car park here. Before I show you the bike at night, I'll show you what the uh, lights look like during the daytime. Okay, so here we are, the bike's running. This is its kind of daylight running mode, if you like. And if you can see with the, uh, on the waspy sort of LED lights, just the bottom set are on uh, at this time of day. And when you just start the bike as usual, uh, the light switch is here. We'll push it out, we put it onto full beam, and then we can see you get the full gamut. I hope you can see that on the camera, okay? It's really, really bright. Alrighty, and then uh, you've got a flasher here as well. So you can just press that, and uh, if you pull it back, you've got these sort of trigger light flashing. All right, so much during the day. Let's, uh, be using the magic of YouTube, let's go to night time, see how she fares at night. So with the magic of movies, night time on the uh, KTM 790 Adventure. And probably no surprise to learn that that big old waspish headlight is absolutely brilliant at night. As usual, I'm on the GoPro and it's rubbish at picking up lights at night, so you're gonna have to take my word for it. But that light is absolutely epic. It's on dip at the moment. If I push the little trigger forward, there we go, there's full beam and it is absolutely lit the way up ahead. 
as if you've turned on an absolute searchlight. Brilliant, definitely amongst the best, if not the best headlight I've ever used on a motorcycle. These new KTM headlights, no matter what you think of the looks of them, they're very insectoid. There's no denying they work brilliantly. So the lights on the bike, absolutely fantastic at night. And then the other thing that is uh, so great about riding modern day KTMs at night time as well, is this, I hope you can see it, but the switch gear is actually backlit. I mean, it's pretty simple switch gear on here, but even on this bike, they've backlit it. It's something that KTM do on all their new bikes now. I don't know why other manufacturers don't follow suit. It just makes so much sense, particularly on bikes with more complex switch gear. As I say, this one's not particularly complex, but this has even got backlit switch gear, so that's great. And then, of course, the big TFT switches to night mode, so it's not dark, uh, sorry, not uh, really bright and distracting. So that's easy to uh, read at night as well. So massive thumbs up for the KTM riding at night. They've really thought it through. Backlit switches, amazing lighting, and a good TFT as well. So uh, yeah, if you've got to ride at night, no problems at all on the KTM 790 Adventure. Nice one. Okay, so at the start of the video, I told you that I'd give you a little bit about cost of ownership. How much is the bike going to cost you to own and run? So, as usual, I've done a bit of research to find out uh, what the figures are for tax, insurance and servicing on this bike. So, I've uh, written them down so I don't get them wrong. So, first off, uh, road tax or vehicle excise duty, as we should rightly call it in the UK. As it's over 600cc, you'll pay the top whack of road tax for the bike. Uh, that is £88 per year or £7.33 a month. Um, insurance, I went and got myself a quote from Principal Insurance, they've got my details on file, so this is just indicative, it only works for somebody that lives in my house, in my area, my age, with my no claims. Uh, but uh, by way of an indicative price, uh, this bike came out, best um, fully comprehensive uh, insurance quote was £216.16 with a £400 excess, so that's uh, £18 a month for insurance, so that's pretty good, uh, pretty good on the insurance front I think. Servicing, a bit more tricky. Um, I, the service intervals on this are 9,320 miles. Bit of an odd number, I know, but that actually means it's every 15,000 K. So quite a long service interval, which is great. Had a bit of trouble uh, getting any um, quotes from a dealer. I found two dealers. Unfortunately, neither of them could tell me how much uh, it cost to um, service the bike, just because they didn't have the figures yet. Uh, and also found KTM UK who are out. So <laughs> had to come up with a bit of an estimate based on what I know from previous reviews. So uh, what, uh, as I say, there's a... The service interval 9,320 miles, and there's a 600 mile running in um, check, so that's um, oil and filter. Uh, the uh, 600 mile running in service is about £120, depending on your dealer. Uh, and then there's a minor service at 15,000 kilometres, or the first 9,000 miles, that's uh, about £260. And then the major service, the next 9,320 miles, is £525. So those are estimates that I've put together based on what the uh, Super Duke are, the Duke 790 and the 1290 uh, adventure cost. So I imagine I'm, I'm fairly close with that. So um, if you assume you're going to do 5,000 miles a year, what I've done is I've taken uh, the minor and the major cost for a 20,000 mile ride, if you see what I mean, uh, and divided it by four. So that gives you the price for 5,000 miles. So I hope you're sticking with me here. So that works out at £196.25 or £16.35 a month for servicing. Okay, so you add that lot together, uh, it comes up at uh, £41.69 a month or £500.28 a year. Uh, just to keep the bike in your garage ready to roll. That of course excludes consumables like uh, tyres and brake pads and discs and it excludes any depreciation. But uh, as an indicative cost, £41.69, I've been doing a lot of these calculations over the years, that's one of the uh, better value bikes to keep. Right, cleaning the bike then. Well, big old adventure bikes are never easy to clean either. There tends to be lots of nooks and crannies, lots of scaffolding, etc. And the KTM 790 is no exception. In terms of where it gets itself dirty, if we have a little quick look here, I've ridden this, uh, I'm filming this in the summer, but I have ridden this in the rain, so you can see where some of the dirt goes. So the swing arm at the back, uh, the wheel seems to get quite dirty as well. Uh, obviously up under the exhaust area is a common one. Uh, you get a bit chucked up around the fuel uh, station, uh, station, around the fuel uh, tank. And the front uh, mud guard takes a brunt, of course. And then, uh, if we have a look around this side, you can see down by the uh, the chain there, uh, Brett's pretty cruddy. But anyway, I'll get cracking on and clean it, and we'll see how she comes out.
So, a couple of uh, practical items that sometimes people ask me uh, about when I'm doing these more in-depth reviews. Uh, first off, uh, pumping up the tyres, um, you may notice that this has got these straight uh, valve caps on the tyres, so it doesn't have those little angled um, valves. So, uh, to actually pump the tyres up is a bit of a fiddle to get in amongst the spokes, that's, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing, when it, you come to lubricating the chain, you'll notice it doesn't have a centre standard, standard either. So, uh, when you want to lube the chain, you're going to have to uh, actually uh, get the bike off the ground somehow, either using an ABBA stand or a paddock stand. Uh, uh, in order to lubricate the chain or move it around the driveway or whatever, so there's ways around that, just something to note. The other thing that people uh, often ask me about is the seating position. One of the problems with this bike is that it is very tall. I'm 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch leg and I really struggle to get my feet on the deck. If you look at these pictures, you can see that my foot is just, I'm really on tippy toe. Uh, and although that's absolutely fine on the road, it's, uh, it's an absolute killer off road. In fact, it's preventing me taking the bike off road because I just didn't feel confident in it. So seating position, very high. And then the other thing that uh, people often ask me about is what the, what the horn is like. So let me show you that now. So, of course, it's never easy to give you a completely accurate impression of what the horn sounds like, just uh, picked up from my lapel microphone, but just, I'll give it a blast so you can hear. Now, I'd say that's one of the wimpier horns I've come across. Not a big deal, but not a great horn. OK, let's do my lugging about test. This is something I always like to do on these uh, living with more in-depth reviews that I do on long-term bikes that I have just to see what it's like to move around, simulate what it'd be like, you know, on your driveway or whatever. So, gosh, it's a very full car park today. Let's uh, stick her here, see what the turning circle was like. Right, neutral is beautifully easy to find on here, I have to say. And a good chunky stand, it's killer. Right, in terms of moving around then, you've got this excellent grab handle here. So she's, you've got plenty to grab hold of. As you can see here, I've stopped on just slightly to one side of this standard parking spot. Let's see if I can get around in one or whether I can't. So, lifting her off the side stand. It's quite easy because of that low centre of gravity. I'll put her on full lock. Around we go. And then once I get around 180 degrees, we'll see how she's done. Oh, look at that. Almost within one parking spot. If I come and show you where I am. So I started just on the edge of that one. And here I'm now just on the outer edge of that one. I almost did it within one parking spot. If I started on the very end, I could probably done it. So, uh, excellent turning circle and very easy to move around. It's going to be no issue at all moving this around on your driveway, even if you're a bit of a weakling like myself. So, what would the uh, KTM 790 Adventure be like for touring? Well, in the main, pretty good, I think. There are a couple of things that uh, will let it down for touring. One is that uh, I had a look on the KTM website and I couldn't see any official hard panniers. There are some soft bags you can get and a top box. But and to be honest, that's fine. That's all you probably need. You can probably get aftermarket stuff. So uh, luggage, if you want official side cases, might be a problem. But that's not a big deal. As I say, I'm uh, personally, I'd rather travel with soft, a soft bag and a top box anyway. The other issue, if you're going to want to tour on the bike, it's back to this uh, issue with the wind protection on the bike. Because if you've got any long motorway trips to do, if you're going to go across continents or whatever, although the bike is very comfortable, frankly, on fast roads like this, I'm on a dual carriage right here doing 82 miles an hour. The vibration on my head is unbearable. I've been riding on these faster roads for about the last 10, 15 minutes. But frankly, I just want to get off the bike. It's absolutely horrible. I can't see clearly, my eyes are blurred. I can't see out the mirrors, they're blurred. I've got such a high frequency vibration through my head. It's quickly making me feel, well, ill, frankly. So you definitely, if you want to buy one of these, and with the idea is that you're going to do a bit of touring on it, try one with a big screen first, because with the Adventure R screen, touring, frankly, is not an option. Oh, absolutely tortuous. Oh, man, I've got to get off this road onto something slower. Oh, that is so much better already. Once you've slowed down, normality returns and all is well. It's such a shame because this bike is so good otherwise. Great flickability there. Round the, round the roundabouts, it handles beautifully. It's got loads of low end grunt. So you could have an absolute whale on the twisties on this if you're out touring. And you could take on some trails as well on this R version. But goodness me, long transits on motorway would not be funny. 
So one of the great things about having a bike a bit longer term is that you can kind of get under the skin of it and understand what the bike is all about and uh, really learn what the pros and cons are. So at the start of the video I said I'd let you know the things I'd learnt about the bike, not just the good points but the negatives too. I've made a list throughout my uh, period, as you'd expect of me, uh, and come up with this. So these are in no particular order, but I'll go through the negative points first of all, the things about the bike that I don't like so much. So first off, uh, these mirrors. Um, they're fairly, I've seen these before on other KTMs, I just don't like the design, they remind me of Mickey Mouse ears. So Mickey Mouse mirrors, small point, can be fixed, but uh, why do they persist with putting horrible mirrors on KTMs? I don't know. So that's the first thing. Uh, next thing, uh, related to this little screen, uh, basically at high speed, if you're on dual carriage rail motorways, uh, terrible wind buffet off of that screen. Um, it's, uh, it's the worst that I've ever come across on any bike, it, particularly with a peaked helmet, if you get a right vibration in your head, which makes my vision go blurry and gives me a headache. So that screen would have to go and be replaced uh, with another screen. You can get the screen off the non-R bike, which is bigger. I suspect that would work better. I haven't had the chance to try that out, but I would definitely go with the non-R screen. Um, the bit I mentioned previously, the seat, it's way too high, uh, for me anyway, it prevented me going off-road. And this being the off-road version of the bike, I just didn't have confidence that I wasn't going to drop the bike. One of the things that I find when I'm off-road uh, that gives me confidence is the fact that I can get my feet flat on the deck so that if the bike is moving around a bit, I can you know, stop it from falling. Didn't get that confidence with this, therefore didn't get to ride it off-road. The very thing that this bike is designed for, so I'm sorry about that, that you didn't get me to, to see me ride it off-road. Um, but it's just too tall. Um, having said that, the seat is quite comfortable. Um, the other thing that wasn't so good, the Acropovic exhaust on here, which is an optional extra, uh, although it sounds nice, it doesn't sound very loud. Uh, again, I don't actually know what the standard exhaust sounds like, but the Acro on this isn't quite loud enough for me. I think if I bought the bike and then I bought that as an extra, I'd be a bit disappointed with that. Uh, another thing that I thought was a bit rubbish to do with the controls was, number one, lack of cruise control on here as standard. Uh, I think it is an option, but it's not on here as standard. Similarly, the... Um, Heated grips, not a standard item, you have to have that as an optional extra. And while I'm in whinge mode, the heated grips on here, this little button here, is terrible. You can't really feel when you pressed it, and it's hard to see the lights when they're on as well. It's one of the least good heated grips controls I've ever come across before. They do feel fine, but it does work absolutely fine. It's just a bit of a rubbish control, that. So, uh, poor controls for heated grips, no cruise control. Uh, next up, oh, we were talking about the screen buffet. Uh, the other issue with this is it is adjustable, but you can't adjust it on the fly. I'm told you need tools to adjust it. I haven't worked out how to adjust it. I haven't tried. Uh, I don't suppose it's going to make a lot of difference with a small screen anyway, but non-adjustable, that's a bit rubbish. Um, no centre stand, I mentioned before, so you can't uh, lube the chain. You have to move it around or put it on a paddock stand or whatever, so that's a bit of a pain. And then last but not least, and I'm clutching at straws here a bit, the foot pegs, although they're very good proper off-road enduro type pegs, I do find that the one on this side gets in the way a little bit when you try and put the side stand down. Uh, so there we go, that's the negative things I've found. Okay, well no one likes a whinger, do they? So what about the positive points that I've picked up on the bike? Well, there are a number of these. First off, um, and this was a little bit of a surprise for me, uh, was the comfort of the bike um, in terms of the seat. Now the seat does look hard and it is too high as I said previously, but actually it's not that bad um, in terms of comfort on your backside. I've complained before at KTM's always having hard seats. I think they've listened because that one, I find at least, quite comfortable. So the seat is much more comfortable than it looks and there's a good riding position as well. It's not too sporty, nice wide handlebars, it is a comfortable place to be, so I like that. Uh, the other great thing is the handling on this bike. It's absolutely brilliant. It feels really light and nimble through the roads. Uh, because they've done this clever thing by putting this fuel tank nice and low, the centre of gravity is nice and low, and that makes the handling on this absolutely superb with a lightweight feel. Uh, it's kept the kind of DNA, the fun uh, part that this 790 Duke has, and I love that about the bike. I really did enjoy riding it, and that's got to be one of the most important things about a motorcycle, surely, is how it makes you feel. And this bike does make you feel good when you're riding it. Uh, next thing, great low down grunt is what I've written here. This engine is an absolute peach. It was great on the 790 Duke and I love it on here. Slightly different state of tune on the Adventure. Uh, they've made it a bit more grunty low down and it runs out of puff a bit up top. Uh, but it feels really good indeed. I mean, it's uh, only got something like 95 uh, horsepower, but it doesn't feel like a low power bike at all. Not that that is low powered. There is never a point when I've been riding this bike where I thought what this bike needs is more power. Coming off the line, the bike absolutely flies. So great low down uh, grunt. Next thing I've written down here, which again, surprised me a bit because I often moan about KTMs on this one, but I think the bike actually looks really nice. Uh, I don't, some of the KTMs look a bit odd. I'm never a big fan of all the orange actually, but that's just a corporate thing for KTM. Uh, but this particular bike I think is quite handsome as they go. It looks properly purposeful, properly off-road with things like the high um, mudguard on the front and the, and the knobbly tyres. I think it's a nice looking bike, so that's a good thing. Uh, next thing, while I'm talking about knobbly tyres, these Metzler Carews that it's fitted with the standard are surprisingly good on road. Even though they look quite knobbly, uh, riding it in the rain, I found it quite uh, confidence inspiring, so the tyres are good. 
The other great thing about this bike, which so many uh, KTMs have as well, is the backlit switch gear. Maybe just a minor thing for you. I don't know why more manufacturers don't do that. Triumph now are doing it with the newer bikes, uh, but other premium bands like BMW don't, as far as I'm aware. But KTM do do that, and, they, and this bike is no exception. So backlit switch gear, great stuff. While we're talking about uh, night time, fantastic lights. I know these lights split opinion in terms of their look, their sort of waspish insectoid look, but at night time they really do chuck out loads of light. Great lights. If you're going to be riding at night time, this is a brilliant bike to do it on. Uh, and then last but not least, great balance on the bike. I talked about the handling being really good, but if at slow speeds you can keep this bike upright, no problem at all, particularly if you're stood up. On these pegs, which are lovely wide pegs by the way, you can take the rubber out uh, for doing off-road work, but they're exactly the right spot. The balance at um, slow speeds is beautiful on this bike, really, really nice. So uh, yeah, they were the positive things I picked up. Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, in-depth review of the KTM 790 Adventure R. Uh, I guess my, the thoughts that I'll be left with after this period of time with the bike are that if I was in the market for one of these what we now call mid-size adventure bikes, I'd definitely, definitely consider the KTM 790 because it does make you feel fantastic when you ride it. The engine is a peach and I love the low centre of gravity. What I wouldn't do is go for the R version because the height of this seat and that rubbish windscreen uh, I just don't think are worth it. I think for the advantages you get of the adjustable suspension, if you're not going to be going off-road a lot, uh, then the non-R is the much better version. If you're a hardcore off-roader, then maybe you want to check this one out, but uh, certainly it wouldn't be for me. But uh, a lovely bike in terms of riding it, definitely worth uh, checking out, as I say, if you're in the market. All right, I hope that's been of some interest to you. I don't just do uh, bike reviews here on the Listendon Fly, but I do uh, all sorts of stuff. I do bits and pieces here in the garage about how to look after the bike. I do product reviews, I do trips and tours. Basically, anything and everything that there is to do with motorcycles, I try and cover it here on the Listendon Fly. If you've not done so already, it would be fantastic to have you subscribe, uh, and uh, I could see you then on the next video. Okay, I hope that's been of some interest, and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Listendon Fly. Cheerio. No Mr. and Flyer video would be complete without a white van. Well, I think that's a white van in front of me. If ever a white van needed somebody to write clean me on the back of it, that one did.